Here with their thoughts, former prosecutor, constitutional law attorney, and Newsmax contributor Amir Benno, plus distinguished professor at Turin University, Thane Rosenbaum. Um, Thane, I'll, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on what we see, what we know so far. Bob, I don't think this is actually happening. It's too surreal. Um, I just can't believe that this is that there will even be an indictment or an arrest. It's like Trump derangement syndrome on crack. It's like watching thousands of people running off a cliff. Uh, this is a misdemeanor uh, that the statute of limitations has already run on that's being elevated to a felony, which would require evidence that Donald Trump was actually intending to commit campaign finance law violations, when in fact it's more likely that he didn't know that this would even violate campaign finance laws violations because he's motivated simply, remember, he's using his own money. He's not using funds that he raised. He's using his own money, and he's done it before to pay off someone he slept with. This is a very weak criminal case. It's a fabulous divorce case, by the way. <laughs> it, for Melania Trump, it's wonderful. But I just don't understand that America would actually put themselves through this when the Hunter Biden case, let's remember, the Hunter Biden case, which, of course, would not involve the Manhattan DA's office, deals with foreign influence peddling, right, uh, of foreign entities and also in includes the possibility of his uh, uh, relationship with the Chinese intelligence officer. How, this is about the porn star? Have we still talked about the porn star? The country doesn't care. They already saw the Hollywood access tape. I can't believe, and, and one last thing, the Manhattan DA's office had a much better case in their office, which they're still holding on to, but two prosecutors resigned, and that had to deal with the inflated assets uh, for insurance and bank fraud. They didn't bring that but they're bringing back the Stormy Daniels case. It just seems nuts. Yeah, Amir, if this does happen, and I know Thane doesn't think it will, and, and many people agree, do you think this helps, Trump's or, helps Trump or hurts him? Uh, you know, there's this kind of an ongoing debate here, but with your experience, what do you think? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a debate, and who knows? I mean, what's really impressive, however, is how Donald Trump you remember, he's the one who leaked this story about him being arrested. He was able to captivate the news cycles, again, showing his mastery of the public medium, uh, that he can suck the oxygen out of the room. Nobody's talking about Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley. Nobody's talking about almost anything other than Donald Trump. Again, after he's had uh, been pilloried with all of these other, uh, whether it's January 6th or the Mar-a-Lago, he can still... Uh, compel uh, the, the national attention. And he's playing Alvin Bragg masterfully, because whatever Alvin Bragg chooses to do, if he decides to go forward with presenting the case and securing an indictment, he's going to bring not just a wrath of Trump supporters, but many Democrats uh, uh, along with them who believe that this is evidence of selective prosecution. If he chooses not to do that and he abandons the prosecution, now he looks weak and ineffectual. So either way, he has checkmated Alvin Bragg uh, and he's demonstrated his mastery of the political forum. I think in all of that, and not least of which is his ability to capitalize in fundraising off of this, shows that he is still a major force to be reckoned with when it comes to the 2024 presidential nomination. Thane, let me ask you something. Um, uh, is it illegal to pay off somebody to stay quiet? Bob, there are thousands of cases right now in New York happening. As I'm talking to you, of non-disclosure agreements where people enter into contracts. It's also extortion, right, from the person who's pushing it. In this case, Stormy Daniels commits extortion. But people all the time sign non-disclosure agreements that says, in return for your silence, you take a check. And if you ever speak again, you violated our agreement. And so that's what I meant before when I said, you know, Donald Trump has done this before. And by the way, when you talk about the falsification of a business record, Bob, do you really think that when all these non-disclosure agreements are characterized on the books, do you think that they say paid off porn stars? No, they're <laughs> non-disclosure agreements. means that you want to keep it secret. Why would you characterize it for what it is? If you're paying someone to shut up, you're not going to make your business records reveal what you've done. So I, I, honestly, I just don't see the crime here. On any level, I never did. And that's why I'm saying this is the one you're, this is what you're bringing to the prom. 
this one, right? <laughs> this is this is the one that you've chosen. You bet all those other cases, and this is the one that gets the green light. Yeah, uh, Amir, to Thane's point, I mean, do you think, okay, it's it's this case, um, at least they're trying to get whatever they can get, if they're going to get the uh, given indictment or not, but then do you think we're going to see uh, more with some of the other charges, say, in Georgia? Do you think that's where uh, the indictments are going to be, I think, of much more import, potentially? Well, I think all in the indictments could be important. Um, that's a completely different case, and so... Possibly we'll see something happening in Georgia. But one thing I will say about, to Thane's point, and he's completely correct, by the way, about this, it's not just non-disclosure agreements. It's every single lawsuit that settles out of court uh, is done most of the time with an agreement. And many times those agreements are, you're not going to talk about the terms of this settlement, not because I'm, the person is confessing guilt, but because they've made a a business decision that it's uh, worthwhile financially for them to to pay some money now to buy some silence uh, in order to have their peace. Well, that didn't and work. And that's did just it? the way our system <laughs> works. So, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> he should get his money back, right? Uh, assuming it happened. Yes. I'm not saying yeah, it happened. Right. <laughs> right, but listen, the other thing that they mentioned, I'll say, is we got a statute of limitations issue. This mm -hmm. is back in 2016. Right. There's at best a five year statute. We're in 2023 right now. And when Thane was talking about you need an intent to defraud to bump it up to a felony you need another crime right the fact right. is what crime is that because the mm. feds already passed on this case they said they're not going to prosecute it right. so i you know it's it's really it's puzzling what they're doing right and of course as you pointed out and that civil case is done and closed so yeah we'll see where this goes again awaiting a potential indictment this week here in new york city of former president trump amir benno thane rosenbaum thanks so much for being with us thank you